This video clip is on using the analemma. The analemma is a diagram that I've posted on our class website, which you will need to use for this week's homework assignment. You now know that the subsolar point is the latitude that gets the direct 90 degree vertical rays of the noon sun on a particular day of the year. You have memorized the subsolar point for four days of the year, the two solstices and the two equinox. You can review that information here. On the June solstice, roughly June 21st, the vertical rays of the noon sun strike at the Tropic of Cancer, 23 and a half degrees north. On the December solstice, roughly December 20th, the vertical rays of the, of the sun strike at the Tropic of Capricorn, 23 and a half degrees south. And at both equinoxes, roughly March 20th and September 22nd, though the dates vary throughout the year, the vertical rays of the noon sun strike right at the equator. Here's another way of reviewing that same information. On June 21st, the vertical rays of the noon sun hit at the Tropic of Cancer. The subsolar point is at the Tropic of Cancer, 23 and a half degrees north. Then as you go through the rest of June, July, August, into September, here at the September equinox, the vertical rays of the noon sun strike the equator. Then later in September, October, November, into December, and you have the vertical rays of the noon sun on December 21st, the December solstice, hitting at the Tropic of Capricorn. Then later December, January, February, March, and back here at the March equinox, you're back up at the equator. And then April, May, June, you're back up at the Tropic of Cancer. We remember that the vertical rays of the noon sun range only between 23 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south. With this information in mind, you can actually estimate the solar subsolar point for different times of the year. For example, you know that the subsolar point for the March equinox is at the equator, and the subsolar point for the June solstice is at 23 and a half degrees north. So these two points here. So if I asked you what the subsolar point was for in early June, say June 1st, you would probably guess it'd be between these two points and much closer to the solstice. Notably, there's a way you can be much more precise. In fact, you can determine the precise subsolar point for any day of the year by using a figure called the analemma. The most recent of our textbook does not have a diagram of the solar analemma, so I've included a diagram in this video clip and, importantly, on our class website. Let's go to our class website right now so that you can see how you can download this diagram. So here's our class website. You can scroll down to week three and see the long list of short tasks for you to complete and also the assignments are in there as well. And you can go down here and you see the analemma. Simply click on it and you can view the analemma. I encourage you to actually download it. and showed up on the other side of my two screen computer screen here, so I'll move it over there. There you have it, the analemma. And what's cool about downloading it is you'll be able to zoom in on it so you can see specific days easier, etc. So let's check it out. As I mentioned, we're going to have to use this diagram for one of our assignments this week, and you'll also be using it on the upcoming exam. So make sure that you practice using it and fully understand what it can do. Basically, we're going to use this diagram to find two things, to find the declination of the sun, which I'm going to describe in a moment, and then we're going to use that data to calculate something called the solar altitude. So first, a couple definitions. The declination of the sun is the latitude of the vertical rays of the noon sun on a particular day of the year. So essentially, it's what we've been calling the subsolar point. You've memorized the declination of the sun for four days of the year, the solstices and the equinox. And now we're going to use the analemma to figure out the declination of the sun on any other day of the year. Once we've figured out the declination of the sun using the analemma, we're going to use that information to calculate the solar altitude. The solar altitude is an angle. 
It's the angle of the noon sun above the horizon at a specific location on any particular day of the year. Sometimes we also simply call it the solar angle. Again, the angle of the noon sun above the horizon. So let's get started and check out this diagram. You can see it kind of makes a figure eight of sorts as it goes through the months of the year. We're pretty much only going to be interested in the, the y-axis here. We see that it's called declination of the sun, and it's in degrees. Not surprisingly, then, if we look at around the September equinox and the March equinox, around on this particular year, around March 21st, we see that the declination of the sun is zero degrees, right at the equator. That makes sense. Furthermore, let's go up to June 21st. Here's May and June, June 21st, and we can see the declination of the sun is right at 23 and a half degrees north. Similarly, on December 20th or 22nd, whenever the solstice happens to be in this particular year, the declination of the sun was at 23 and a half degrees south. And throughout the year, the declination of the sun only ranges between 23 and a half degrees south and 23 and a half degrees north. All right, let's give a specific example. Let's find it for August 23rd. That's the date I wrote the lesson this year. So let's um, find August. So I always suggest you go through the calendar to make sure you're going at the right, the right <laughs> direction here. So March, April, May, June, July, August. So August 23rd, well, let's see. They have little lines every five days here. There's August 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. All right, the little beginning of this little black line here, if we scroll over here, we can see 11 degrees. We have to make sure we know if that's north or south. In this case, it's north, so 11 degrees north. The declination of the sun is at 11 degrees north on August 23rd. What that means is that today, when I'm recording this, August 23rd, 11 degrees north is the latitude that is getting the vertical rays of the sun, the most intense sun. Let's do another one. How about October 30th? It's tempting just to say, oh, October, here's the 30th, and try to look for the declination. That's actually September 30th. So make sure you go through August, September, October. Here's October 30th. And you can see that the declination of the sun is about 13 and a half degrees south. So again, at 13 and a half degrees south is where the most intense 90 degree direct radiation of the sun is hitting. Now try a few on your own. May 15th, January 27th, September 11th, and then why not? Your birthday. Pause the video here and figure out the declination of the sun for each of these days. And I'll show you the answers, but really you're going to get much more out of this if you try to do it first and then compare your answers to the correct answers. Don't just look at the answers and say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, did you do it? All right, I trust that you did. Here's the answers. Pause the video and check your answers with the correct answers provided. Instead of finding the declination for a particular day of the year, you can also reverse it. Give the, take the latitude and then figure out what days of the year it will get the direct sunlight. For instance, perhaps you're going to go to Salvador, Brazil at 13 degrees south. What days of the year will the sunlight be most intense? There are two answers to this question. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right, did you figure it out? Let's look. 13 degrees south. Looks like it should be October 29th. And if we continue all the way over here, February 14th. If you didn't get that answer, pause and, and try again. Once we know the declination of the sun, we can use it to also calculate the solar altitude for any latitude on any day of the year. You'll remember that the solar altitude is the angle of the noon sun above the horizon. So it's essentially just the angle that the sun is coming in at your location. I've given an equation here for solar altitude, which we sometimes also simply call the solar angle. You can see it's 90 minus the arc distance. 
but we really haven't defined what arc distance is yet, so maybe this equation isn't yet particularly useful. First, let's step back and see why we would care about knowing the solar altitude. Calculating solar altitude is useful for a variety of reasons. It can help photovoltaic installers tilt solar panels to the proper angle to ensure maximum electricity generation. Ideally, we want the sun's rays to strike the panel at 90 degrees. So the ideal tilt of that panel will actually vary with latitude. Additionally, architects can use the solar angle to properly design roof overhangs. Ideally, here in California, we want to build buildings that have overhangs that block the summer sun that comes in at a higher angle, but let in the winter sun that comes in at a lower angle. To do this, we need to have the correct length of an overhang on the edge of our buildings. And the correct length will depend on our latitude and the solar altitude. Pretty simple and pretty cool. All right, so how do we calculate the solar altitude or the solar angle? There's four steps. First, determine your latitude. That might be given to you in a problem or you have to look it up on the map. Then use the analemma to find the declination of the sun on the day of interest. So you use the analemma for whatever day you're looking for and determine the declination on that day. Next, calculate the arc distance. The arc distance is the distance in degrees between your latitude and the declination of the sun. So once you find one and two, you use those to figure out your third step here, the arc distance. I'm going to give you some hints on arc distance a little bit later in this video clip. Then the last step is to calculate the solar altitude. It's just a simple calculation. The solar altitude is 90 degrees minus the arc distance that you calculated in step three. Okay, so a word of caution on calculating the arc distance. As we said, the arc distance is the distance in degrees between your latitude and the declination of the sun. When you're calculating it, however, I always encourage you to draw a small diagram. For example, if your latitude of interest was 40 degrees north and the declination on your day of interest was 20 degrees south, the arc distance would be 40 plus 20 to get 60 degrees. And you can clearly see that if you draw a simple diagram like this. You can also see why it's called the arc distance. It's the distance along the arc of the, of the Earth from your latitude to the declination of the sun. So in this example, we essentially added 40 degrees plus 20 degrees. We don't always add those two numbers, however. Consider this example. Your latitude of interest is still 40 degrees north, but your declination of the sun on, on your day of interest is 20 degrees north. The arc distance here is 20 degrees, right? From 40 degrees north down to 20 degrees north is 20 degrees. Essentially, in this case, you subtracted the two numbers. Now, rather than trying to remember that you add the two numbers when they're in different hemispheres and subtract them when they're in the same hemisphere, I find it most instructive just to draw a simple diagram, and then it's just really obvious. Okay, so now you know how to calculate the arc distance. And once you've calculated the arc distance, the solar altitude, the angle of that noon sun, is simply 90 degrees minus the arc distance. Okay, next we're going to do an example. And you'll be required to do this sort of thing on the homework this week. So again, make sure that you fully understand the process. Okay, so here's your practice question. Calculate the solar altitude, which is the angle of the noon sun, on August 30th in San Francisco. So you're trying to figure out what the angle of the noon sun will be on San Francisco on August 30th. You're going to follow the four steps we just discussed. First, you'll look up the latitude of San Francisco. Then you'll use the analemma to find the declination of the sun on August 30th. Then you'll use those two values to calculate the arc distance. And once you have the arc distance, there's a simple formula for solar altitude. Solar altitude equals 90 minus the arc distance. All right, go to it. Pause the video and get out your analemma. The answer is posted here in a few seconds, so you'll want to pause the video and do it on your own first. Here's the answer to each step. And the final answer is 61 degrees. On August 30th in San Francisco, the angle of the noon sun coming in will be 61 degrees from the horizon.
keep practicing, and enjoy this week's assignment.